run. You're safe now. We won't let it hurt you. I'll look after the girl. You teach that thing a lesson.
Finally. Sid, are you hurt? I'm fine. I think. No. What is it? A diary. I gave it to Chadwick before we went our separate ways. He was here. Do you think that creature? I'm sure he fought bravely to the last. The girl is safe thanks to him. Chadwick. You fool. Come on. We have to get her back to the hideaway. We don't want his sacrifice to have been in vain. No. Of course not. I'll see that she's looked after from now on. It's the least I can do. From what I hear, you've barely left the girl's side in days. I hope she's recovering from her ordeal. She is. Slowly, but surely. She's far tougher than she looks. I thank the flames we found her. If we hadn't... I know. But we did. I'm sorry we weren't able to save Chadwick. There's no need to apologize. Without your help, I would never have found out what happened to him. How he fought to the bitter end to save her. To save Heide Marie. That's the man I remember. The man I thought of as a brother. I wish I could have met him. I'd like to hear more about your past. If you don't mind, that is. Of course. You already met my former master. She trained Chadwick and I to do two things. Kill and obey. We were supposed to be sold to the highest bidder when the time came. But no bid was ever high enough to convince her to part with us. For years, we were her daggers in the shadows. But we could never quite shake our doubts about the things she made us do. And then, one day, we just couldn't do them anymore. So we escaped. But staying together was out of the question. They would have found us too easily. After so many years of training, the pull to serve was always strong. It scared me to think he might have taken another master, become a dagger in someone else's hand. But even in captivity, the battles he fought were his own. And he died not as someone's tool, but as a hero. Heide Marie is proof of that. Bearers can cast off their shackles. And the curse breakers will show them how. I'll fight until my dying breath to see it done. For Chadwick, and for all of us. Thank you, Doris. We'll be counting on you. I will not let them be forgotten. Sid, may I have a moment? Of course. It is an honor to finally speak with you. My name is Herman. I've been with the Curse Breakers for some time now. And uh, 
I wish to be deployed to Ash. Any assignment will do. No. The lands across the Narrow are too dangerous. I will not send good men and women to risk their lives needlessly. Why would you want to go back? I need to retrieve something. Something important. I was raised in an orphanage. The Badbach Conservatory. Or rather, I was held captive there. It was not a place of nurture. It existed solely to turn bearer children into mindless weapons. We were tortured until we feared no pain. Tormented until our hearts turned to stone. And few ever survived long enough to become tools of the last king. I can't imagine. I lost so many. I... I can't even remember all their names. But they must be remembered. They cannot fade away, faceless and forgotten. The Institute was run with military precision. Every child measured. Every name recorded. Every death logged with meticulous care. Sid, allow me to travel to Ash and recover the registry so that my brothers and sisters might live on. You are a good friend, Herman. But the fact remains that Ash is simply too dangerous. Sid, please. Even should it cost me my life. Too dangerous for you, Herman. But not for me. I'll go to Badbach and find the registry. You will? I won't let you risk your life. I don't know how to thank you. You can start by telling me where I'll find this orphanage. Vida Grace. Hidden in a forest. Overlooking the plains. All right. I'll see what I can find there. May the mothers guide you. Clive, my boy. What a pleasure it is to see you. Hippocrates. There's something I need to ask you. I've been charged with locating a book called From a Distance. Then you seek a rare gem indeed. One whose name I had not thought to hear from your lips. <sighs> You've been talking to Vivian. Right as always. But she didn't seem keen to tell me very much. I take it she didn't like what you had to say. And yet I gather it did naught to dissuade her. Clive, if the young professor has tasked you with obtaining a copy, I fear she asks the impossible. The executors would not allow it. The executors? Coveters of Secrets. A clandestine organization committed to the collection and intenebration of forbidden texts and technologies. One such text being the tome Vivian seeks. Chronicling as it does, the true history of the enslavement of bearers. A tale which could overturn the established order were it ever to become widely known. Or, so rumor has it, I've never actually read the thing, or even set eyes on it for that matter. 
How is it that I haven't heard of this organization? Why, secrecy is the executor's watchword. They lurk in the shadows, emerging only to seize that which must be seized, be it books, inventions, or people, before disappearing again, leaving nary a trace. Which would explain why Vivian's copy was snatched from her grasp not long after she found it. By the hand of the executors, yes. But what drives them? Self-interest or ideology? Fine question. Sadly, all that is known of the executors can be recounted in a single breath. You may just as soon ask me of their origins, numbers, or the identities of their leaders. Any answer I give would be pure speculation. Then my hunt was doomed from the first. What was Vivian expecting? That I'd pluck it from thin air? Not from thin air, no. From ash. Rumors of the executors are rife among the scholars of Storm, but rather less so across the strait. I have a friend. Well, I had a friend in the village of Garnik, a collector of rare tomes, upon which subject we would oft correspond. Alas, I have heard naught from him since the skies fell dark. And no doubt he too has turned. But though he did not mention it by name, it is possible that a surviving copy of From a Distance yet rests upon one of his many shelves, quietly awaiting discovery. If you were, by some chance, able to save even a single book from the poor man's library, I know his soul would rest easier. Very well. When I next find myself in Walud, I'll be sure to pay Garnick a visit. Knowledge hoarded is knowledge lost. Having never visited, I cannot tell you exactly where in Garnick my friend's lodgings lie, but he did mention they were some distance from the road. I make no guarantee that you will find what you seek there, only that it is the best and perhaps the only place left to look. I have a few new notes that might interest you. This, I believe you will find most interesting. If you have a question for me, I should be happy to answer it. You are always welcome, Clive.
fly, Ambrosia. This be Mickleburg. Be safe. These people aren't turned. And the village seems safe enough at least. I came here looking for someone. To be honest, I... I wasn't sure I'd find him here. Let alone all of you. Hmm, is that so? What are you doing here? Is this... where you live? It is my home. The others... they... they heeded the call. You keep saying that. <sighs> what do you mean? They came here to perform the rite, just as King Barnabas instructed. This village is their altar, where they shall cast their souls upon the gentle waters and give themselves to the Lord. Give themselves? Oh, Lord, cleanse us of our sins. Let us be reborn in your loving arms. Free us from the torment of this mortal realm. They want to be saved. Forgive me, but did another foreigner like me come here? He was probably wearing a cowl. You mean the traveler from Stone? Yes. He is staying at my house, toward the rear of the village. Thank you. If you don't mind, I'll go and greet him. They seek the same salvation Barnabas did. <sighs> at least the third chair still lives. Let's go and find him.
Excuse me. Are you with the Undying? I am. And so it would appear, are you? Lord Rosfield, if I am not mistaken. That's right. And you must be the third chair. I am. Cyril was worried for your safety. He sent me to find you. Then I must apologize. I did not mean to trouble the bearer of the burning quill. Much less you, my Lord Marquis. He said that you had failed to report. Is there a reason for that? I came here to study the followers of this new faith. But the more I learned of them, the more my own faith began to falter. You have seen them at their prayers, have you not? They devote themselves to the veneration of their Lord with a fervor I have never seen before. Praying night and day that they might be rid of their wicked wills and reborn in their Savior's light. Not that they might be granted respite from their worldly woes, but so that they might continue to serve him. Serve him with all of their beings. I too swore to devote my life to the service of my Lord and Master, but this... tis different. It is more. And so I would see it through to the end. See these people safe, that they might achieve their dream. That they might do their duty to their Lord. Even if it should keep me from doing my duty to mine. You do understand what their dream is, don't you? I do, my Lord. They would cast aside their wills and become Akashic. I know that it may be hard to believe, but to these people, that is the very essence of salvation. Forgive me, my lord, but I must remain here. If you are to return to Master Cyril, I would consider it a great... Did you hear that, my lord? Something is happening. I'll go and find out what. Stay here. Beneath the flood. Oh no. There must be something I can do. as well. Found her. Ready, brother? Ready. Meet again. I've killed your kind before. Too slow. Nice try.
chance to find true salvation by devoting themselves to the service of their Lord just as I did when the undying plucked me from the gutter and gave me a cause to believe in a duty to serve was everything to me and I would not deny them that fulfillment, even if they must become Akashic in order to achieve it. Forgive me, my Lord Marquis. I did not mean to trouble you with this. My findings, could you deliver them to Master Cyril for me? Of course. Your duty will be done. Ah, look, my lord. They are saved. Saved. Found her. I should get this report to Cyril. My Lord Marquis. Welcome back. I am glad to see you hale and whole. I met with your third chair, Cyril. He bade me deliver his findings to you. Thank you, my lord. He remained in Ash? He died protecting the villagers from an echo. I buried him in Mickleburg. I'm... sorry that I couldn't save him. If you could not save him, no one could. The villagers, they were... believers in this savior cult. They prayed to their god that they might be unburdened of their wills. Then an ether flood came, and their wish was granted. Your brother sacrificed himself that they might live, even knowing that that life was death by another name. Then he perished defending liberty. A hero's end. For the right to choose how one dies is no less sacred than the right to choose how one lives. Huh. Sid would agree. He wanted to build a world where people could die on their own terms. A noble ambition. To die for one's cause is the most perfect expression of one's faith. It matters not how misguided others might judge one's decision to be. Only that the decision is one's own. We live according to the teachings of our order. We believe in them. We protect them. And yes, we die for them. For better or worse, that is our creed.
But he didn't die for your creed. He died to save them. And you still believe that what he did was right? I believe... that he believed it was. We of the Undying are not slaves, but willing servants. And this was his will. The ultimate expression of it. <sighs> all right. I'd like to know this man's name, Cyril. To know the names of all the Undying who've fallen in the line of duty. They died serving my house. It's only right that I remember them. That is my duty. Of course. I shall fetch the Book of Martyrs at once. My lord, it has been, and shall ever be, the greatest honor of my life to serve House Rosfield. Though our duties may differ, yours is no less important. I pray with all my heart for your success. And were they here, I have no doubt but that every one of my fallen brothers and sisters would feel the same. The village looks abandoned. Now, which house would a bookworm live in? That's better.
This is a Royal Army logbook. You take this in the local barracks. His interests were certainly varied. This is it. But if what it says is true, I need to get this back to the hideaway. Leaving so soon, stranger. We've been watching you. From a distance, so to speak. Subtle. I know who you are. Then we need not waste time on introductions. Hand me the book. Leave it in our care and return to your life. Your care? Do you mean to burn it or bury it? That is not my decision to make. But by one means or another, its contents shall be removed from the common record. Then I'll have to politely refuse. 
I won't let you erase our history. Then we find ourselves at an impasse. Very well. The book can just as easily be pried from your dead hand. Let's see, shall we? Impressive. But we have other means. We shall claim the book yet. Why do you want it so badly anyway? It lays out in no uncertain terms the vanity and avarice of mankind. It tells the shameful history of the persecution and oppression of a gifted few by a giftless many. Would you say that this interpretation was correct? I don't know. You don't know. Your sword may be sharp, but your wits are dull. So let me answer for you. There is no correct interpretation of history. That a series of events took place may be proved beyond a doubt. But there can be no single, immutable explanation as to why they came to pass. It is a question of numbers and of belief. If enough people believe that a set of events occurred for a reason, that belief becomes the truth. So you're trying to control the truth? We are trying to protect people from themselves, from knowledge that would bring them naught but pain. That is all. You may keep the book, for now. The world is small. We shall meet again. Until then. Wait! Let's get this back to Vivian. Perhaps she can explain what that was all about.
Let's go. Brother. Tables, girl. This must be the orphanage. Hopefully, the registry is still here. <laughs> <laughs> 